Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. I am Craig. Well, if you've been watching the channel lately, I've been going deep, deep into all the ways you can live off the grid longer, whether it's solar generators, folding solar panels back here, 12 volt fridges over here, batteries are in the middle. So this is sort of a part two to the very last episode I made where I did a review of the Litime 24 volt, 200 amp hour, big mamma jamma battery. It's a beast, it's a beast. I tested it, it got over 5,400 watt hours out of its capacity. It's only rated for 5,100 according to the specs. So it over outperformed, which I've said in that last episode is sort of common now for the batteries to outperform what they say they're gonna give you. And solar generators generally underperforming what they say they're gonna give you because there is a bit of phantom draw when it comes to going from battery to AC or DC and the conversion from uh, maybe a 48 volt uh, power uh, bank, power bank to a 12 that you're using, it's got to convert it. And so long and short, solar generators generally underrepresent or underperform what they say they're going to give you. Batteries generally overperform. This is an exciting episode because this is what I use these batteries for. I don't have a million reasons to have batteries other than to add capacity to my solar generators. And I've tested a lot of solar generators. And my big thing is I love the AC output and the DC output. But generally my, the, the bottleneck of the whole situation is the just a lack of battery capacity. They stick so much stuff into these things with inverters and of course big screens and all these other things that it takes up a lot of space and then they don't have a lot of space left over for a battery. And really the advertising these guys are doing, it's got 2000 watts of uh, AC out with a surge capacity of 4000 watts. And that's where they're selling you on how much you can run off this not necessarily as important to them as how long can you run at those high levels. And that's where uh, buying some of these batteries, not this one, but the big Blue Eddy I have in the other room. I've got a little Blue Eddy back here. If I have any more stuff on this table, I swear it's gonna collapse. But um, the big Blue Eddies, they do sell uh, expansion batteries where you can buy, in essence, from Blue Eddy or from EcoFlow, whoever you're buying from, a separate battery bank that ties into your existing solar generator to give it double the capacity. It's a very expensive way to add capacity. Now there are some pros to that. It's all connected. So the screen shows you how much is in both batteries and yada, yada, yada. Um, if you want economical, if you want to be a little frugal about tripling or quadrupling, maybe 10 timing if you've got a small solar generator, your capacity, then what you do is you buy yourself a lithium iron phosphate battery and then you do what I'm about to show you. Okay. Step one, get yourself a battery. Doesn't have to be this big. This one is the one I got really excited for because it's huge. Um, and there's a reason to be 24 volt versus 12, but we'll get into that. First thing you need to do is buy yourself a battery charger. These are the, all over Amazon. I've looked on Canadian and American Amazon. They're all, they all look the same. Jeez, we're making a mess back here. They look like this. They're all built in China. They don't even really mark a name brand on it. So just go and find something that looks like this. This is a smart battery charger, 20 amp, 12 slash 24 volt. And on the bottom, you have the ability to pick a normal lithium battery, an AGM or lead acid battery, or a LifePo4, which is a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is what we're talking about today. So you just tell it that's what you're charging. The only reason that needs to be there is you can't charge a lead acid battery nearly as quickly as you can a lithium iron phosphate battery. So if you pick lead acid by accident, it just means it's gonna charge at a lower rate than if you picked lithium iron phosphate, because the lithium iron phosphate is a superior battery and can charge a lot quicker. The reason you need to buy one of these is when we deplete it to the solar generator, you're gonna to need to put power back in when you have lots of solar, or if you wanna plug into wall power and you wanna just speed up the process um, to charge this back up. The most important thing from this, buying this, is you get these alligator clips to, in this case, a XT60 connector. Why is that important? Because that is generally the connector that goes into these solar generators. If it's not an XT60, it's an XT90, which is just a big brother of this, a little bit larger, same, same, same sort of general shape. And you can buy just buy a connector, which I have around here somewhere, where you stick an XT60 to XT90 conversion little dongle, and then you can plug it in directly. So, step one, buy one of these. They're very inexpensive. I think in the States they're like 40 bucks. In Canada, because of our exchange rate, they're like 55 or something. It's not a lot of money. And you can use it for anything. You can charge your car battery with this. You can charge a lot of things with this. So it's not like you only use it for this one purpose, but it's there. And most importantly, it's because you want these alligator clips. If you won't go to Amazon and say, I want good quality alligator clips to an XT60 cord, you're gonna pay like 
at least in Canadian dollars, are like $25 for this cord. Or buy the whole solar generator thing that comes with this cord for $50. It's a no-brainer. Just buy the solar, uh, the, sorry, I say solar generator, battery charger, and it comes with this. Okay, so you get that. Now, one thing I mentioned in the last episode, this is the new big Mama Jamma battery I was just reviewing, and I mentioned that I was gonna show you in this episode that if you connect this, um, I don't know, it's a battery monitor is what it was. It's when I did my review for a Power Queen battery, it shows you, now you go in the menu and you tell it how many uh, amp hour battery it is and all in the menu so it knows. Right now it's showing about 100% state of charge. I've got 200 amp hours left, which is the capacity of this battery. My present voltage is 26.6 volts. And it'll also show me when I plug into this, something into this, what my watts are being used going in. And when I'm charging this, if I'm charging it from a wall outlet or other way, it'll tell me how many watts are going in. It also, when you're going out, it'll tell you how many hours you have left at the current uh, discharge rate before you will be dead. And vice versa, when you're charging it, it tells you how many hours until you're fully charged. So it's very, very cool. And again, it's nice to see a big number that says, what percent charge are you at? So you don't have to look at, just look at your battery and go, gee, I don't know how charged it is and have to go get a voltmeter and put it on. And I don't know, do you know when if it's 25.8 volts, how close to full is that? I don't know. The, the outside of the case is 24 volts. So if you got a 25 volt reading, you might be like, it's fully charged. No, it's not. Actually fully charged is, as you can see, I'm at 26.6 volts right now. Uh, and that's what it's saying is 100% charged. So. Go buy these, Power Queen has it on their, their website. Litime, the company that's for this battery, I didn't see anything like this on their website. If they do, Litime, let me know. If you're gonna come out with something like this, send it along next time you send me a battery because I like this one from Power Queen and I'm gonna keep it permanently on this battery because this is gonna be my go-to solar generator um, re capacity expander, for lack of a better term. I just wanted to show you this. This is uh, the same Litime company. Uh, they sent me two of these small 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. And they were sent it to me, mostly the notoriety was they're very, very tiny. They're smaller, they've, they've packed it with a denser uh, battery um, battery bank in there. So smaller space, same uh, 100 amp hour capacity. What I was doing, again, because I want 24 volt, is I was taking this and uh, putting this battery in series. And then from the other two, positive and negatives, I connect my solar generators to that. And you'll see why in a second, I want 24 volt for extra charging capacity quicker. Now I'll show you this, in exa this exact sample. I've taken off the, the wire that makes it in series. So right now it's a single lit time, 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. I'm gonna plug it into one of these solar generators. First thing you do, put the black on the black and the red on the red. Don't put it into your solar generator quite yet. Now I've bought this little extension just so I can go further from the battery to the solar generator. Now this, oh here we go, the prime example. This solar generator at the bottom uses a, XT90, so I told you before that little dongle, so this is an XT60, you just put this little dongle on, it turns it from an XT60 to an XT90, then plug this little, just, you don't need to do this, but you could, unless you wanna have your battery right beside it, you kinda need an extension cord. Take this now, because this solar generator takes an XT90, you plug that in, and now this is plugged into just a 100 uh, amp hour, 12.8 volt battery. And as you'll see from this big screen, it's bringing in 102 watts, which is exactly what I expect from a 12 volt battery. That's just what you get. Here's the magic. So I'll disconnect that now, put the battery back in series so that now I'm turning this one 12.8 volt battery into one 100 amp hour 12 point, you know, or 25.6 volt, theoretically, if it was fully charged. Now I'm not sure this battery is fully charged, but you'll definitely see the improvement here. So watch, three, two, one, plug it in. Let's see, we're getting 100 watts, and I'm now getting 500 watts. And you're like, what? Huh? It's all because of the MPPT controllers in this. It's getting that massive amount of volts, and it's scaling it to make the most efficient way to charge this battery bank, which is probably a 24 volt battery bank. Maybe. Maybe it's a 48, but I doubt it. It's probably a 24. So I'm going 24 to 24. The MPPT controller is using it the most efficient way possible. And it's giving me 500 watts, five times the charge rate, which means if I'm using this with AC out and I'm drawing out 300 watts, 400 watts, this is more than keeping up with it. 
if I had just the normal 12 volt battery and I'm only, only bringing in 100 watts, but at the same time I'm, I'm drawing out three or 400 watts, this battery will eventually die. So there you go. So that's just that one. And I wanted to show you more than one just in case you think it's just this brand that's doing that. So let's go back to the 12 volt. Okay, so I plugged it back in just the single 12 volt, 12.8 volt, one battery. I'm gonna plug it into this solar generator just to see what it shows when you just have a normal 12 volt battery plugged in. It wakes up and it gives me, when it eventually gets around to it, 109 watts, 104 watts. Again, that's just with the normal 12 volt battery. Let's unplug it. Putting this back in series again to make it a 24 volt battery bank. Okay, it's plugged into the battery in series. Plugging it back into here. Different brand. We'll see what that MPPT controller in this brand does. There we go. 460 watts versus 100 and sometimes less than 100 when I just had it into one battery. So that's what happens when you put two batteries in series to make it 24 volt. Now this battery, the big one, is even better because it's one battery, I don't have to do a bunch of wiring. Now I know I've added wires for this monitoring system and it's got a ton of wire because you're supposed to mount this to a wall, say in your RV or your boat, near where you want to see it, but your battery might be way on the other side of the RV or boat, so that's why they give you a ton of wire. But let's just unplug it from here now. And before I move on, I'm gonna use it on an even smaller solar generator. This is a little blue eddy. Okay, with this smaller solar generator, it's only bringing in 211 watts. So there you go. Because this is a smaller solar generator, its MPPT controller is having a harder time bringing in a lot of juice by converting 24 into whatever this voltage of this battery bank is. So it's only giving you 211. It's still double, more than double the capacity or, or, or flow of a normal battery, which would have been a 100. So you're doing double. But on these larger ones with bigger MPPT controllers, you're getting four or 500 um, watts coming in at a time. So just thought I'd show you the smaller solar generators won't get quite as much benefit as a larger solar generator. Okay, and let's use the big battery this time. So just so you know the way it's wired this way, you put your red on, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little red lead wire on the red, and then this big Mondo wire goes on the uh, black. The red wire just goes into a little port in here that, that senses the flow of voltage going through. So what you do is you put the red on the red, and you don't put the black on the black over here, you put the black on the other lead over here, and then you plug it into a solar generator. Let's pick, uh, I don't know, this one. And this is the same thing. It should read exactly the same as before because it's still a 24 volt. Yeah, there you go. 487 watts. And let's see what the um, little battery monitor says. The little battery monitor says it's putting out 550 to 560 watts. I don't know if you can read that. But it's also going to show you how many it says nine hours and 15 minutes, 915, you see that? That is actually showing you how many hours you have left at this draw rate before this 200 amp hour, 24 volt battery would be dead. So there you go. I don't know if that's completely accurate, but at least it gives you a general guideline for how much time, you know, if you're gonna walk away, you know, you've got at least nine and a half to 10 hours of constant charging this at 500 watts. Actually 550 if you count the, uh, battery monitor what it's saying it's, it's doing. Yeah, I noticed with the solar generator, this number fluctuates a bit. It's like 485 and every once in a while it'll go 420 and then it's, it's a little bit more, 504, jumps around a bit. Let's try this one down here. Now I know I need to switch it back to, that thing is a very loud solar generator too. Not one of my favorites. Um, I'll go in this one. I love this one for the screen. So this one, again, going off the big Mama Jama battery. 490, 507, 503, so about 500 watts. And again, looking at the battery monitor, this is, yeah. See, this is a more efficient solar generator, I think. It's saying 510 watts going out. 510 watts, and it's saying, because it's not 550 like the other one was drawing, it's saying right now 13.22 hours. So yeah, probably would like to use this one. My Blue Eddies, uh, and this one down here, the Safery, are my fav more favorite ones. And I also don't mind All Powers as one, a big one over there. I like that one. Uh, this All Powers, this older one, not really one of my favorites. And it seems like you can see there's a bit of an inefficiency there when this, the battery monitor is saying it's putting out 550 watts. And this one was telling me it's bringing in 480. 
490, 420, it's fluctuating, but it's never showing 550, which means the battery's sending juice, but this thing's only accepting so somewhere in there there's a loss. So yeah, anyways. The other thing I like about this solar generator is it's bringing in 500 watts and it's quiet. Quiet. As soon as I plug this one in, the fan comes on, it's super loud. So let's just take this one off the desk. No more marketing for you. So there you go. That's what you're gonna do with a 24 volt battery. You can either do that by putting two 12.8 volts or 12 volts in series to make a 24 volt, or just get yourself a battery that's already 24 volt. A lot of boats, RVs and all that, like their house banks to be 24, even 48 volts, because they can send more juice on a thinner wire. So less copper wiring needed if you put the battery bank at a higher voltage. Because a certain amount of watts is really just volts times amps. So if your volts are twice as big, you have to put half as many amps, which means the wires can be thinner. So that's the put power in. Okay, Craig, but doesn't that mean that your cons, I get this all the time. Doesn't that mean you just have to plug this into wall power? You're just wasting money charging this so you can add to this. Yeah, that's one way to do it. If you're in a rush, if you're going camping and you say, look, I want this to come with me, but I also want a lot more capacity. I'll bring this, but I don't have time for solar to charge this to full. It takes forever. So plug it in the wall overnight when it's cheap. At least here in Canada after 7 p.m., power's like half the price of during peak times. So charge your battery at night. But what I suggest if you were living completely off the grid is if you had solar generators, probably if you're living off the grid, you have a bigger one than this. But if you have a big solar bank, what you're gonna find is during the day, if you've got your solar panels properly sized for your, for your house bank of, of solar generators and whatnot, you would have more than enough solar that during the peak sunny periods, you should be fully charged or pretty close to fully charged. If you're getting fully charged, you know what your MPPT controller does to your solar panels? It shuts them off. You're not getting any more solar in because your batteries are at 100% and it just shuts it off. So that every time I'm on a sunny day and I look at one of my solar generators and it's at 100% and I see the watts coming in is zero, I feel ripped off. <laughs> I feel like, what? All this free power I'm not getting. Um, so that's where you dump that power into uh, this solar generator or into this battery, sorry. So here's how you do, well, just a reverse process. So you got your battery charger and all you do is reverse the process. See, I've already got this plugged in to this solar generator, but what I do is I take this out, take that, put that into the battery charger, plug it into the AC, turn on the AC. Now I don't have this obviously plugged into solar right now. There you go. Battery charger starts charging. I've got it set, it automatically senses it's a 24 volt battery and is bringing in, it's sending 26.7 volts at 5.3 amps. I think it's 5.3 amps instead of the max 10 that is set for because this battery is pretty close to full. As it gets closer to full, battery chargers know to tail off how hard it's trying to charge because you don't need it when it's just topping it off. It's really at um, almost full right now. So it says it's bringing in 27 volts at, okay, at 10 amps it's doing, so that's a whole 200, 60, 270 watts. It says on this it's bringing in 26.5 volts at 5.2, or sorry, 8.6 amps. So there you go. And it says this thing will be fully charged in six minutes <laughs> because it's pretty much already fully charged. Four minutes, three minutes. So I might as well just unplug this. So you just take that off there and unplug this outside of this. But there you go. So to summarize, all you need to do is buy yourself one of these. Again, you can get them from Amazon. They're really, really, really cheap. Mostly you want it because of the alligator clips. You take the alligator clip thing and that is your from battery to solar generator cord. Buy an extension if you want to be further from your, buy an extension if you want to be further from your battery bank. Then you also will use that exact same thing you bought for that alligator clip cord and you will use it to plug into your solar generator to recharge your battery on the days where you have tons and tons of solar coming in and you have nowhere to put it, then you dump it into here. And it also gives you the opportunity that if you don't have enough solar and you never get this thing charged properly because this thing's never full, um, then you plug it into wall power and charge it that way. But at least you know when you go camping or wherever for the weekend and you don't think this has got enough capacity for everything you need, then uh, you've got this. Prime example, my wife went camping with the family without me. <laughs> I was busy doing something else. Um, and they wanted to bring a kettle because she was sick and tired of trying to boil water over a Coleman stove. So I said, well, bring a kettle. You've got the solar generators. I've got 
13 solar generators in my house right now. Um, you got the solar generator, take one of the big ones with you and go camping. And this thing's got a, well, not this one, the big one over there and, and my Blue Edu. They have like 2,400 watt output capacity. So it's more than enough to run a kettle, which is about 1,500 watts. So she plugged it in, but she says, man, the battery went from 90% full to 60% full in one boiling of water. Like it just sucks the power out of you. If you don't have a big battery bank, things like kettles just kill them so quickly. She didn't bring a battery, but if I was there, I would have said, let's bring a battery bank too, so that we can use this for whatever we want. We'll not worry as much about how many watts we're using because we know we've got another, what did I say, 5,400 watt hour capacity in this bank as well. And you can leave this just in your trunk of your car. You don't have to carry this around. And then whenever you need to charge this back up, you just go over, put this in the trunk with this battery and plug it with these um, alligator clips and let it, let it go. If you're not using this for anything at the time, that's a good time to top the battery back up again. So there you go. Hopefully this is the time I've explained it enough in one episode that everybody understands the whole flow from battery to solar generator and then back from solar generator to battery when you have enough solar. So there you go. I think people got confused about that. How do you get power back into the battery? So if you found this informative, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already for more content about how to live off the grid longer. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.